Hi everybody and welcome to another tutorial for organizational behavior and in this tutorial we're going to talk about the Mars model and so why don't we get started. So the Mars model is all about uh, motivation, ability, and uh, role perception. And so what we find is on this side of the coin, we're going to see that there's personalities and values and self-concepts and perceptions that people have about themselves in different categories and different areas of, of their work. And there's also gonna be perceptions and motions and uh, attitudes and stress. And so when we, when we look at the idea of personalities, there's multiple different types of personalities and there's multiple different types of personality tools, assessment tools to use to figure this out. One of the most popular ones is Myers-Briggs. Another one of the most popular ones is Enneagram. And so if you've heard of those two, then uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. In fact, in the resource that you have for the course, the Myers-Briggs is brought up in the course material. So if you need to be uh, refreshed on what Myers-Briggs is, just go back and read that and um, we find that uh, values play a big role in uh, the results and the behavior of individuals because everyone comes with their own set of value systems their own set of core values for instance concept and confidence and self-efficacy play a huge role in the outcomes of individuals as well as outcomes of teams and perceptions and emotions and attitudes those are massively important because how we view the world and how we view ourselves interacting with the world is massively important. And so when we look at the idea of stress, there's all, there's two types of stress that we want to be aware of. One is distress, and that's that kind of stress that really provides a lot of pressure, um, a lot of negativity, a lot of unwanted due attention into a situation. But there's also a type of stress called eustress, and eustress is what we would deem as positive stress to the degree that it forces us, motivates us, encourages us to get things done on time. So deadlines, for instance, would be a form of eustress. Um, some types of positive peer pressure would be a form of eustress. So we see somebody performing at a really high level. We want to attain that ourselves. That would be a form of eustress. And they all go hand in hand together. You can't take one individually by itself. They all affect each other. And so when we begin looking at this, at this package um, for individuals as well as for teams, we understand that they influence motivation, ability, and role perception. And so when we talk about motivation, we're really talking about those internal forces that affect a person's voluntary choice in their behavior. And that's really important for us to focus in on that it's a voluntary choice. Somebody's not being coerced or forced to do something. It's a voluntary choice to engage in a type of behavior. And so there's direction in, in that kind of choice. There's intensity in that kind of choice, but there's also this idea of persistence in that kind of choice. So motivation, we would, we would break it down in, into three basic components, and, and I'm simplifying it to a degree. But motivation has intensity, motivation has direction, and most of it, motivation also has persistence. And so those three together go into what we would define, describe as what motivates somebody to behave in a certain way. The other aspect that we want to key in on is this term called ability or aptitude or capabilities or competencies. And so aptitudes are learned capabilities that we are required to, to bring to successfully complete a task. Okay. And so a lot of times we want to look at matching a person with a particular task. It's some, in some cases we call that job matching where we have a particular job or we have a particular task that we want to have done. We want to make sure that we choose the right person for that task. And we talked about this earlier in the previous video about organizational behavior when it comes to teams and team effectiveness. And when we're building a team, we want to make sure we have the right people on the team. And so this fits in with that quite nicely in the sense that we have a task, we're building a team to accomplish that task. We want to make sure that the people that we bring onto the team have the ability, have the capability, have the aptitude to f successfully accomplish those tasks. Now, when we get to role perception, this is an interesting piece because role perception often talks about how somebody sees themselves 
in regards to a particular role or a particular job or a particular function within the team. And those role perceptions get clearer when people understand that there's an accountability process in place, uh, not just uh, in, a, in a negative or a disciplinary faction, although that needs to be talked about in the team charter when that gets put together. But there's also this idea of understanding what's a priority, understanding what's massively important as opposed to just what's important or what's not important. And there's also the idea of having clear roles helps people to really do their job well. And having clear roles is a is a decisional based process that the team has to go through. And, and going through that process, it can sometimes be difficult. It may even cause a tiny bit of conflict, but it's really important that the team and the individuals go through this process because with clear boundaries now, people are able to stay in their lanes or they're able to focus in on what they need to do uh, without ambiguity, <clears throat> without, without any interference. <clears throat> and then they can really understand how their piece of the puzzle fits with everybody else's piece of that puzzle. And it really actually, it brings a lot of freedom for them rather than constraint. And so some people look at, well, you want to, you want to define the roles. You want to put constraints on this. No, no, it's, it's actually the reverse. Yes, we want to put roles and, and boundaries in place, but we do that to create freedom because it, it, like a football field, if you know where the sidelines are, now you can play the game in between the sidelines according to the rules, but you have the whole sidelines to do that game in. It's no different here when we have rules um, and, gu and guidelines set in place. Now you can go about your business and now you can really accomplish that task in almost any way you want within the rules, within the boundaries, creates a lot of freedom that way. And so we understand that th these three things have an effect on each other. <clears throat> the way we perceive ourselves in a, in a team or an organization, the abilities or capabilities that we bring to a situation or bring to a team, bring to a task, and even our motivation in the direction, especially the intensity of what we want to do and what we want to accomplish, they all have an effect on each other. And so that's why I've drawn these arrows in here because they are not three islands in and of themselves. They all have an effect on each other. And I believe that when you work on one, it will have an effect in the others. That's what we call open systems thinking. And that brings us to this other part of the model where before we get to the individual behaviors and the results um, piece, we want to understand that there are situational factors that come into play before we see any results or we see the behavior. Now, situational factors can be external in the sense that they can be external forces being applied to a team or being applied to an individual. Could be changes in the marketplace, could be changes in the organization, it could be even family changes or, or outside of work personal changes that really take place. But the thing that we wanna keep in mind here is that they are constraints to achieving what we need to achieve. Now that could be time, it could be budget, uh, it could also be the, the facilities or the resources that we have. And so oftentimes we're told, well, we have all the money we need, we just need more time or the reverse. We have all the time we need, but if only we had more resources, if only we had more money, then we could really accomplish what we need to do. So those are some constraints that we want to uh, be aware of when we get into situational factors. There's also some cues that we want to be aware of here in regards to what's the market doing and, and forecasting what's happening in there and how that will have an effect on what we do, especially now that we're in this COVID situation. It's having a massive effect on the economy. It's having a massive effect on education. Uh, almost everything that we do is touched by it. That is a massive situational factor that has an effect on how people behave and even the results that we're hoping to get. So I hope this really helps you understand the Mars model of, of motivation. And so that's that's what I would say if somebody asked me, well, what's, what's the name of this model? It's the Mars model of motivation, Mars being an acronym for motivation, ability, and role perception. And what's the concept of the model? Well, the model is really trying to communicate to me that there are multiple aspects that go into understanding why an individual or a team achieves a certain result or behaves in a certain way. And it's not always internal, like their personality or their value systems or their self-concepts or their perceptions or the kind of stress that they're under. It's, it's 
not just there, it also lies in, in their motivation and, and in their own ability and even in how they're perceived in their role. But it's beyond that too, in the sense that there are situational factors, mostly external, that have an effect on all of these things. So we put all these things together, helps us to understand why individuals, uh, teams behave a certain way and why they, we see results and sometimes why we don't see results. So I hope this helped. If it did, that's great. Uh, there'll be another tutorial coming out soon. So thanks again for watching. 